Live United. Live United. Live United. Live United. Live United. Live United. Vivimos juntos. We live united. We live united. I live united. Hello, and welcome to Live United, a show that explores how, when community partnerships are formed, and when people work together, lives are enriched and changed for the better. I'm Milton Little, host of Live United. In the past, and perhaps even now, many people thought of United Way of Greater Atlanta as a mere funder, a nonprofit that simply collected donations and dispersed them to community programs. A community chess that had little involvement with rolling up our sleeves to engage in community work. But times have changed, and United Way is taking new approaches. Yes, fundraising and grant allocations remain a staple of our work. But just as critical for us now is this concept called collective impact. And that means being part of a cross-sector collaboration among strong partners in nonprofits and business, government, faith-based organizations, and more, to identify the issues that keep individuals and families from reaching their full potential, and bringing about viable solutions and results together. On today's show, we want to share some of the ways United Way partners are creating collective impact, and showcase a few of our trusted friends and partners working with us to help those in need. You'll hear about United Way's AmeriCorps program, which manages 20 professionals in health facilities in Fulton, DeKalb, Cobb, and Clayton counties, and has increased health care services for almost 8,500 uninsured and underinsured homeless people. And in the second segment, we'll talk about the programs that are bringing together a caring network of partners to change the odds for parents and young children. Why don't we get started? I'd like to welcome Barbara Peters, president and CEO of First Step. And joining her is Mary Rucker, AmeriCorps member at First Step. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Thanks Barbara, for having us. Barbara, why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about what First Step is all about? Sure. Yeah, First Step is um, a nonprofit based in downtown Atlanta, and we focus on helping clients develop a source of income. We work with homeless men and women, and our whole emphasis is helping them get something that can sustain themselves, so not just putting a Band-Aid on the problem, but really solving the problem. So how do you, and what kind of services do you provide to yeah. help them do that? We've got two signature programs. So the first one deals with folks who can work. So we have an employment program. We run actually a staffing agency and work with local businesses, contract for jobs, put people into those jobs. Um, we provide supportive services around that, helping them get rides to work and uniforms and so on. Then the second program is for those who can't work because there's a significant uh, percentage of the homeless population who has chronic illnesses. And for those individuals, we help fast track them for Social Security disability and for Medicaid. What are the biggest challenges your clients mm -hmm. face, both in terms of getting work and then because so many mm -hmm. health services that people get are, are because they're working, right. what kind of challenges do they face there? Right. Well, there's so many challenges. I mean, folks who are trying to work in this economy, it's a difficult economy. There's a lot of competition for jobs. Our folks are motivated and so ready to go to work. So once on the job, they do beautifully, mm -hmm. but it's hard to get that start. Most jobs these days, a lot of the jobs, let me say, that our clients start with don't come with health care mm -hmm. benefits. Okay. So they just don't have access. And then, of course, our individuals with disabilities really typically have no income and no insurance whatsoever. So. Yeah, so without that insurance, there's such limited access to health care for indigent individuals, um, and it takes a long time to get into those. So, you know, if you or I get a cold, we get over it in a right. few days. Right. If they get a cold, it's pneumonia, and they're in the ER. It's intended just to be a hand up, not a handout, just to get folks on the road. They do the rest. 
Well, and we've also, you know, talked in the past about the role that AmeriCorps has played. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if many of our viewers know what AmeriCorps is, and, and so maybe you could say a little bit about AmeriCorps, and then I'll ask Barbara mm -hmm. what, uh, what difference it's made to First Step. Sure. Um, AmeriCorps is 10 months to 12 months um, service. It's based in the United States, so it's kind of like Peace Corps um, in the United States. We get a small stipend, and we also get an education award that's great. Um, it's over $5,000, so that helps us further our education. Mm. Wow, that's pretty good. What's the general age range of AmeriCorps um, members? So there's one program that does 18 to 24, and okay. the particular program that I'm involved in, there is no age limit, which is great. Mm, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. So. What's the connection between First Step and its programming and AmeriCorps? Well, it's been a fantastic partnership. United Way actually secured this partnership and got a grant from AmeriCorps. They do all the recruitment, the management, the training, um, which is wonderful because First Step can really stay focused. We stay in our lane. We're wanting to get people health care benefits. So um, our AmeriCorps folks come in. They work with assisting clients. Um, they'll work with keeping clients engaged. I mean, it's just a fact, a homeless man or woman who applies for Social Security has about a 10 to 15 percent chance of getting it. It's, it's dismal. But um, with this hand-holding process mm -hmm. that we do at First Step, they have about an 80 percent chance of getting it. So AmeriCorps is a direct contributor to that. Folks like Mary are working to keep that client engaged, keep them in the process, help them with other problems that come up along the way. Right. and. Um, and result is they have income and health care. That's pretty amazing. What's, Mary, what's the experience been like for you? Um, it's been wonderful. I've been able to um, touch lives in, uh, every day mm -hmm. and see that difference that it makes, actually. Um, also, I've gained new and transferable skills, which is great. I know how to advocate now on behalf of our clients. Um, I know how to manage a caseload of clients. Um, and then I also know how to coordinate care. So that's really been wonderful. Um, also, the stipends that we get were considered low income. So I'm accessing some of um, the same resources that our clients are. Really? So I know what it's like to sit in a low cost or free clinic for hours waiting on care because I've done that. I know what it's like having to communicate with uh, DFACS and the food stamp office because I'm getting food stamps. Mm -hmm. So um, it really helps me understand what they're going through a little bit more. Tell me a little bit about, more about that experience. You know, it's probably a new experience for you. What's mm -hmm. it meant to you? Um, it's it's been wonderful. You know, I get to um, see somebody. You know, I had a woman who had not had an apartment for 25 years. 25 mm -hmm. years. She had not had an apartment, and this woman was 52 years old. And so when she got approved, you know. She was gonna. She said she was so excited. She never had a place of her own, mm. and you know, to see her getting her first apartment was was just awesome. Mm. So, um, it's been amazing to touch lives and really restore that dignity back um, to the homeless population. And you know, we have people that come in and maybe they haven't talked to someone in weeks. Mm. So just having a listening ear for them and someone to talk to, it's been great. Did you have any idea your AmeriCorps experience <laughs> would be like that? No, I didn't. I mean, I knew that I was going to be gaining new skills, but I really, I didn't know, um, I, I knew how rewarding it was going to be, kind of, but I didn't realize what an impact mm. it was going to have on my life. Um, and now it's affecting people around me too, because I've become an advocate on behalf of the homeless population. So that's really great too. I've been able to um, change some ideas about the homeless population and what they're facing and that it's not all because they're addicted to drugs right. and that's what caused them to be homeless. There's other factors as well. How important are partnerships to you every day yeah. in making it possible for you to do the things you have to get done? I don't think there's any way we could do the work we do without these partnerships. Um, you know, there's always limited resources, that's just a fact um, for everyone. And so each partner brings something to the table and we kind of surround our clients like a village, uh, which I think is important because it takes a village. So um, our partners each contribute in a way that none of us, I think, standing alone could do. 
um, it's been important to be able to convene those partners, and I think that's what so much this relationship and this project has done. It's brought housing partners, it's brought health care partners, because the work is meaningful to all of them. I mean, quick example, we've been working with Grady for several years, mm -hmm. our AmeriCorps folks are embedded right. in that, and um, they've seen $6 million back in Medicaid for reimbursable charges that they had thought was uncollectible. So Six million dollars? Impact, huge wow. impact on the community. Mm -hmm. Another little statistics, um, the a homeless person, particularly with chronic disabilities, right. will cost our community about 40000 each year to, to take care of them. So someone getting off uh, and onto these benefits, onto the Social Security benefits, is tremendously impactful. Our AmeriCorps folks, I think, handled about 200 people last year. So wow. that's $8 million wow. to the community. I mean, it's just not insignificant. Um, Interesting. Did yeah. you have, Mary, any idea that these kinds of partnerships were really how things got done in community work? No. Honestly, no. And um, when I realized, you know, how many partnerships we have and then what an impact first step is making in the community and how we're able to do that with mm -hmm. the help of other organizations, um, it's been great learning how to collaborate with other organizations to get things done. Yeah. So. You think you're a different person because of this experience? Yes. How so? Um, I have more compassion now uh, for people, especially the homeless population. Mm -hmm. um, it's instilled in me just, I, I know I want to work with homeless populations going forward. And I also still want to do um, some type of service. Your colleagues in AmeriCorps who've also been doing this feel the same way? Yes. I, I, yes, definitely. We've talked about it before and um, the impact that we've seen mm -hmm. and um, how, how we'll be changed forever from this. How do you think you've been able to get things done without folks like Mary and others? We could do a little bit, and we could do as much as we could do, right. but bottom line is this expands our reach. Um, you know, I think the other side benefit is just a nonprofit in general. The Marys are our future. Mm -hmm. So I think we're growing some leaders through the program. So we've got so many benefits to the client, to the community, and then to the nonprofit sector as well. I think you're, you're right on that. Yeah. You know, the whole idea of AmeriCorps was not only it was going to provide a great value in terms of direct service, but it would help inspire yeah. leaders and nonprofit folks and even for-profit people to, to mm -hmm. have much more of a civic and, and, and community commitment. So it's working from that standpoint. Definitely. It's terrific. And I think our clients would say the same when they walk in and have contact with someone like Mary. I mean, you can imagine if you were in need, you'd want Mary on the other side of that desk. How do people find out more about First Step? Sure. And if they, if they sure. want to get involved, is there a way for them to get involved? There is. We certainly have an active volunteer program. Okay. So they can reach us through our website, mm -hmm. um, which is firststepstaffing.com. Right. They can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Um, so we've got an active social media program, it's right. pretty new, right. and um, certainly by phone, and that would just be 404-577-3392. But we uh, really encourage volunteers. Mary made the point of sometimes just listening to people. Right. So there's so much a volunteer can, be, can do just in seeing someone. Homeless folks can tend to be invisible, sure. and so it's, um, it's amazing what that small contact can do for someone. Well, Mary, we're going to put you on the spot and give you the last word. What's the one thing you want to leave our viewers with today? Um, I would say, you know, ending homelessness is a process, but it can be done. Um, we can end homelessness um, one person at a time. And um, so just, just, you know, stay strong and know that we can end it. I've seen it. Well, thank you, Mary. Thank you. Thank you, thank Barbara. You. We're so happy you were able to join us today. You both are showing how working together can make a difference. The AmeriCorps program is a great example of how United Way is working differently and collaboratively to get people the help they need in education, income, health, and homelessness. Some of our other AmeriCorps partners include Good Samaritan Health Center of Cobb, the Georgia Lions Lighthouse Foundation, the Center for Black Women's Wellness, and there are so many others. As the saying goes, snowflakes are some of nature's most fragile things. Mm -hmm. 
But just look at what happens when they stick together. When we stick together as a caring community, the impact we create collectively can be much more powerful than any one of us can create on our own. We'll be right back. Well, I am a former United Way alum and I um, found out about this wonderful program AmeriCorps has to expand the capacity of nonprofit organizations. One, I've been very impressed with the level of dedication, uh, the intelligence, and mostly the empathy that the volunteers have for our clients. Um, they lend a sense of dignity for caring for people. number of client stories that stick out in my mind, but one in particular is when I was actually shadowing one of the optometrists in Augusta, Georgia, and um, the patient came in and she was nearly in tears and was just saying to the doctor, I just don't understand, why, you, why do you do this? Why do you help people who don't have insurance? And the doctor explained that we do all of this just for you, just to make sure that you can get back into um, having a lifestyle and being a part of society again. It's extremely important to have volunteers at a, not any nonprofit organization. A lot of our main daily activities can't be carried out with such a small staff, so our volunteers really help supplement everything we do. And the funny thing is that the day that my glasses came in the mail, my other glasses broke. So. If I hadn't had the foundation, if I hadn't had the um, appointment here, I don't know what I would have done for getting new glasses or having an eye exam period. I couldn't afford it, so I don't know how I would have done my job without my new glasses. Welcome back. Let's continue our conversation about collective impact and how United Way of Greater Atlanta is working collaboratively to get stronger results. In this segment, we'll highlight some of our work in the health, income, and education areas with Making Our Moms Successful and its sister program, Parents as Teachers. These are perinatal initiatives in which trained parent educators work with families to improve health outcomes in mothers and their children. Joining me is Twana Nelson, Parents as Teachers Program Manager at the Clayton County Board of Health, and Deetra Riley, Financial Education Manager for Credibility. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Let's we'll start with you, Twana. Tell us a little bit about um, making our moms successful and parents as teachers. What, what are they and what are they trying to do and who are they serving? Okay, well uh, Making Our Mothers Successful and the Parents as Teachers program is a home visitation program and what we do we have trained uh, parent educators is what we call them and they go into the home and they, they do resource, take resources, uh, educational um, curriculum that we that we do through parents as teachers. It's an evidence-based curriculum that we use. Um, they also, it's a support uh, system that they deliver to the families too. So it's it's an in-home home visitation program and our main goal or focus is to make sure that the mothers have healthy pregnancies and healthy babies. So what kind of challenges were the moms facing that made these programs even necessary? Yeah, there are a lot of challenges facing our mothers today, uh, especially in Clayton County. Uh, and I can speak on that because that's where our program is, is located here in mm -hmm. Georgia. Um, one is that we don't have public transportation there, so access to health care, uh, some other issues facing them, challenges is uh, a lot of them don't have jobs, okay. they're single mothers, the health, you know, health is really, is really important to getting prenatal care in the first trimester is what we focus on because that's very important. Uh, if we can catch, you know, any, anything that's happening in the first trimester, then maybe it could be um, corrected, you know, before they have the baby. Um, but there are a lot of different challenges that, that we see with our mothers. Financial, uh, that's when we partner with, with Deidre here. Uh, she offers the financial counseling. But there's, I mean, they, they don't have jobs, they, I mean, health, they don't have, um, they don't even know, you know, where they're going to get their next meal from, some of them. So, oh. you know, offering, just, you know, getting them to that, you know, supplying their needs, basic needs first is kind of what we do. And then we can input the curriculum to them and give them, you know, more knowledge and education. But lots of time we have to address those initial needs first. 
So, so who is this parent educator and, and how do they come in and, and even begin to make their way through all those challenges with yeah, a, with yeah. a Our mom? parent educators are, they're trained once okay. again in the uh, parents as teachers curriculum. Uh, and they're knowledgeable, they know they know the resources in the community, mm -hmm. they're able to, if someone comes to us, we, first when we go into the homes we do a needs assessment mm -hmm. so we can tell what is actually needed and then once the parent educator does that needs assessment and decides that then she can kind of reach in her handbag of goodies and say okay well this is what you need and I know the resources in the community so we're very connected to those resources and, and have a good relationship with those folks in order to uh, service our clients so our parent educators we have three of them on staff right now so they're also known as our home visitors okay yeah. and we're talking to Deidre about um, healthy children so where's financial education come in where's credibility come into this right the role that we play with the PAT or the MOMS program mm -hmm. is that we actually provide um, a created uh, case management program that okay. we've created. What's that mean? Um, that case management approach basically includes um, in-person education seminars. Okay. We'll talk about financial management classes that range from credit all the way to how to purchase a home. Um, in addition to that, we also provide individual counseling follow-up for the client, um, so we'll be able to speak to them individually about their individual credit and budget. And then, of course, we follow up with uh, additional resources, um, things that they may need like um, health care or child care, things of that nature in that particular county. And financial education is certainly important to all of us. Yes. There had to be something you at Credibility saw going on that made your that made the the decision that made it real reasonable for you guys to decide to really zero in on on moms Correct. What was going on? Well, we believe that, of course, with the life skills that you know United Way promotes right. on a regular basis, mm -hmm. uh, man money management is definitely one of them that everyone needs to focus on. Um, and I have to say everyone, especially moms, because if they are in a single parent household or even a double parent household, based on the economy right now, there's a situation where a lot of people are, don't have a lot of funds in order to raise children as properly as they need to. Gotcha. Twana, you were talking earlier about about the involvement of credibility and, and the challenges that these moms and their kids are facing. I would imagine there's a whole community full of resources that you've got to rely on to help mm -hmm. those parent educators really get their job done. Can mm -hmm. you say anything about that? Sure. Um, we, we also uh, developed, it's called our Perinatal Infant Health Coalition. Okay. And this is where uh, our Dr. Brian Alpha Bala Brown, which is our district health director, mm -hmm. she um, recommended that we do this. And it's a, it's a way where all of our internal and external providers come together to find out what is needed in the community and share information. So we have like a network and we know kind of what's happening in the community and what's available there. So it's very vital to know, you know, and be connected with those resources so that we can pass along to our clients. Sure. And you said earlier that home visitation was an important aspect of this. Very. Tell us about the process of this home visitation. What are they going to see? What do they do? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and, and how benef beneficial is that for the, for the mm -hmm. families? Mm -hmm. Well, the home visitor or the parent educator, as we call them, they go into the home. Right. Uh, and, it's, and it's very vital in Clayton County, like I said once before, before because we don't have public transportation. Mm -hmm. So it's good to take the services in home to them where they're, they're comfortable, or safe, and they feel comfortable with the home visitor sure. in their own, own home setting. So, you know, being able to go into the home is really vital and take it to them because lots of them don't have transportation um, to get to us so we mm -hmm. take it to them so there's a curriculum that we do a lot of times we don't get to that curriculum because there's so much other so many other issues going on that we have to address before we get to that but we do SIDS training uh, in the home uh, we tell them about uh, nutrition right. and, we, and we tell them we actually have we have through our SIDS program we have what's called a crib matching program so if they don't have a crib okay. then we supply them with a crib we supply them with car seats, you know, and there's a training for the car seat. There's a car seat class as well. And there's, I mean, there's things that I took the, the class and who knew that car seats had expiration dates? I mean, there's so much that, you know. That. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So there's a lot of information that we give to them and then, that, you know, the tools that they need to be successful. So that's really what the program is about, to give them those tools in order for them to, to establish a better lives for themselves and their families. Well, speaking of tools, I mean, credibility and, and you yourself have got to be in there helping folks get the tools that are necessary to make their way through a tough economy. Absolutely. How are you helping people really figure out where to go, what to do, how to earn an income and, and stabilize? 
Correct. Um, I can tell you, Milton, that the first thing we do is tell people to take a deep breath okay. and remain positive. Right. Um, what happens is that children will end up seeing that their parents um, behave in a certain way and they may, you know, emulate that behavior in school. Mm -hmm. So we, again, we just ask pa parents to be positive, mm -hmm. um, communicate with their children as much as possible. Um, I think also in this period of time um, to be um, being able to involve themselves in a the homework process would be a, another great idea. Um, in addition to that, just going up to the school and making sure they understand what is going on with the student. Um, because most teachers will end up calling whenever there's some issues in the household and usually it's going to be associated with something that the parent may be dealing with at that time. Gotcha. But this is just a small piece of what Credibility is doing. Why don't you tell our viewers a little bit more about just what Credibility is all about, how broad its services are. Great. Um, well, Credibility um, was formerly Consumer Credit Counseling mm -hmm. Service. We've been in the metro Atlanta area since 1964. Okay. We are a nonprofit credit counseling agency focusing on really five main lines of service. Um, one of them is going to be budget and credit, uh, where we just simply assist people with making their budget and then checking their credit. Um, the debt management plan is another thing very associated with uh, credit cards, um, lowering interest rates, especially in this tough economic time. Um, in addition to that, we do a lot of housing, um, foreclosure prevention, reverse mortgage, as well as pre-purchase counseling. Uh, financial education is the piece that we're working on with the PATS program, and that is where we actually go out in the community and do face-to-face -face classes. And of course, unfortunately, our last result is bankruptcy. Uh, bankruptcy does provide um, and require that they have education as well as counseling. Gotcha. And Tawana, just like credibility, this is just a little piece of what Clayton County Board of Health has going on. What right. other things are they doing right. that really help um, improve the health outcomes in that community? Okay. Yeah, we have lots of programs at the Board of Health. Now, like you say, ours is just a little piece of, piece of the puzzle. Um, really needed, but it's a, just a little little piece of the puzzle. Uh, we also have Babies Can't Wait there. Um, babies Can't Wait. Babies Can't Wait. Okay. Yeah, see first. Um, we also have a, we just started implementing a, uh, it's called the locker room, and it's for men, because uh, traditionally men are like ostracized from public health, but okay. we're, this is a program to draw the men in, because if we have healthy men, then we have healthy families. I mean, that's one of the things, you know, the thinking behind that. Uh, we also have the WIC, um, Women, Infant, and Children. That's a big program that's been around for a, a long while. It offers nutritional uh, support and also food items to, to pregnant uh, women and children. Gotcha. So there are a lot of programs and you can contact the health department and, and be glad to help you and direct you the, the right way. Well the community is blessed to have strong partnerships like yours that are really helping improve the health and well-being of vulnerable families. Mm -hmm. Thank you both for being here. Thank, Thank you, you for having us. United Way is proud to partner with Credibility the Clayton County Board of Health, First Step, and hundreds of other organizations around Greater Atlanta for what we call collective impact. As United Way continues to work differently and collaboratively and move away from simply being known as a program funder, we will be rolling up our sleeves and meeting head on the challenges facing vulnerable lives in our community. Today, one in four Georgia children live in poverty and too many people do not have access to basic health care. When United Way joins coalitions to tackle these challenges and ensure our work generates broad scale, measurable results, then we build stronger families and we get children off to healthier beginnings. This increases their chances of long-term success and we're making strides to see our region as a place where individuals thrive. But there is still so much left to do to be Greater Atlanta. To learn more about our work, go to unitedwayatlanta.org. And we'll see you next time.